Hi, my name is Beth Massey and today I'm going to show you how Visual Studio Light Switch handles database concurrency issues and how you can tap into code to control how these issues are resolved. Concurrency issues are common in multi-user applications that have a database. They arise when user pulls up a record on their screen, but another user makes changes to the same record in the meantime. So when the first user tries to make changes and save their data, a conflict happens. The application must detect and handle any data conflicts that may have occurred. For example, the other user may have modified the exact same field or may have even deleted the entire record. So this task of detecting and handling concurrency issues is not only important for the integrity of your data, but it's also quite complicated to handle yourself. Luckily, LightSwitch makes handling conflicts very simple. In fact, you don't even have to do anything to enable it, it's just part of the runtime. So let's see how this works. I've already got a data model here open that we've been using in this video series. It's a simple order management system that allows us to work with customers' products and their orders. I've already entered some data into these tables from a previous videos. So in order to demonstrate a conflict, let's create a couple screens to find and edit a product. Okay, so let's go ahead and to demonstrate this, I'm going to add um, a screen, right click on screens, add screen. We'll start with the search data screen and we're going to go ahead and work with products in this one. Okay, and on this search screen I'm going to add a couple things into the command bar that will help us demonstrate um, simulating a concurrency issue. I'm going to add a uh, delete button and an add and edit button. Okay, and then we're going to need to add a, a details screen for the product. So when we pull up a record, when we go to edit a record, this screen will open. And we'll use that as the default. Okay, now in order to simulate multiple users, okay, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to allow multiple instances um, on this screen. Okay, now I, I, could, um, I could go ahead and deploy the application to multiple computers, but um, that's kind of a hassle just to test this. So instead, we're going to simulate two users opening the same exact record by just allowing multiple instances. Okay, so let's go ahead and head F5 and let's cause some trouble. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a, a new product into the system here that we're going to work with. So I'm just going to add some chocolate here. Okay, and um, we'll just put this in the category of sweets. Okay, so let's go ahead and save. So now we're going to work with that record. All right, so in order to simulate a conflict, what we're going to do is I'm going to actually go ahead and open up chocolate, and this is the detail screen, and I'm going to do it again, okay? All right, so now we have two, we're simulating two users in two separate applications. So what if I had, what if I change the, or what if I go ahead and change the uh, description, okay? And maybe I put chocolate, you know, um, chocolate nuggets. Oops. There we go. Okay, so I've changed the product name and the description. Um, I'm simulating this second user that's come in and edited it and saved in the meantime while I'm still sitting here with the original data on my screen. Now, if I try to change it, change something, let's just change the description. Okay, and now when I press save, what LightSwitch is going to do is it's going to come up with this data conflict screen. Now you can see that the two things that have changed b behind my back um, is the product name and the description. And it's showing, um, it's showing us here, right here, what the server value is when we drop down. So this is my value on the client, and this is the server value here. Okay, so this allows the user to choose which one they actually want. Okay, so I actually want chocolate there. And let's go ahead and say, oh, this looks like a pretty good uh, description. So we can go ahead and merge these changes, and we'll accept those changes. Okay, and so that that's how LightSwitch's default data conflict ha um, or concurrency issue handling works. Okay, so another way another way we can simulate this is if we go ahead and say, open up chocolate. 
Okay, actually in this screen right here, when we refresh it, it pulls up the server values, right? Okay, so here's the chocolate again. What if I go ahead and delete this row, okay, and save it? All right, now I've still got this record here showing on the screen. Okay, so what if I wanted to make a change to it and save it? Here's where the server doesn't exist anymore. Okay, the value on the server doesn't exist. It's been deleted. And so now the data conflict screen um, goes ahead and says, okay, the record has been deleted. Okay, so we got to delete the record. All right, so that's two ways to simulate, or those are two different types of conflicts, and that's how we can simulate concurrency handling. We didn't have to write any code um, to get this to work. However, there is a way to tap into the conflict handling if we need to, okay? For instance, say we want to automatically accept the client's changes if this product's discontinued flag hasn't been changed, uh, meaning we'll only present this screen if someone else marked a product discontinued behind our back. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and let the last one um, in win. Um, so let's go see how we can do that. Okay, so in order to do that, we're going to need to write a little bit of code here on the product details screen. So um, I've got a little resol small resolution, but you should see a write code button up in the corner of your screens. And what we're going to do is we're going to select the product detail saving method here. And this is where we're going to write some code. Now, it's going to be a little bit more complex than maybe what you're used to because what we're going to do is we're going to analyze an exception that's going to come back um, while the um, while the product is being saved. So a concurrency exception is what's raised during the save if there's a problem, okay, with uh, with the uh, currency issues. So what we're going to do is we're going to first I'm just going to uh, import this. Uh, up here at the top, Microsoft Light Switch Details um, namespace. And this will allow us to get at some of the classes that we need inside. So I'm just going to do a try catch here. And what we're going to do is handle the saving ourself. Okay, so we're going to just say me.dataworkspace.applicationdata.save changes. Okay, so when the user clicks save, we're going to go ahead and execute the save changes manually here. So I'm just going to say the handled equals true. And this just tells the uh, runtime not to go ahead and um, automatically save changes again. Okay, so we're handling that. Now what we're going to do here now is we're going to catch, what we want to catch is a concurrency exception. Okay, so there it is, concurrency exception. And if that happens, we're going to need to write some logic that's going to test and see whether or not the discontinued flag was modified. Okay, so the way we do that, first I'm going to come up with a, a couple of little flags here. I'm just going to have a save flag here. Um, so we're just going to start off with this as false. And then what we're going to do is we're going to need to find um, for each of basically what's inside as, of this concurrency exception. So if we say for each um, it's an entity conflict, okay, so I'm sorry, an entity conflict, we'll call it EC, um, as an I, it's an I entity object, okay, so an I entity object you'll see right here. Basically what it is, is in the exception, Okay, so entities with conflicts, you'll see right here. Okay, now, so this is a collection, an I enumerable, of these entity objects that are in, um, in conflict. Okay, so there's a problem between the values on the client and the values on the server that have changed in the meantime. Okay, so there could be um, a collection of them. For instance, with screens where you're modifying multiple products at the same time, this could be uh, many uh, products having a conflict. Um, this particular screen is only going to have one at a time, but we should, I'm going to write code here that would work on a screen that ha could handle multiple as well. Okay, so um, for each of those uh, with conflicts, okay, we're going to need to do some stuff. What we're going to need to do is first find out if there was the discontinued flag was modified. Okay, so I'm just going to call this, um, this is called a, the property conflict. Okay, we're looking for this specific property. Okay, and I'm just going to write this query from P in this entity conflict, okay, the details of that, here we go, the entity conflict conflicting properties. Okay, so these are the, all of the properties on the entity that have a problem, okay? So I'm looking specifically for ones that are uh, property named is discontinued, okay? So where the properties name, okay, and I'll say to lower, okay, is discontinued. 
C-O-N-T-I-N-U-E-D. There we go. Okay. All right. So what that's going to return is either a collection of, of properties or not. Okay. So is discontinued is not modified at all, then we're not going to have anything in this prop conflict variable. Okay. So all I need to do now is if, if we don't have a problem, okay, meaning that we didn't, um, nothing changed, Okay, nothing on the discontinued, nothing discontinued changed. The discontinued flag didn't change. Okay, so, oops, prop, let me do this, prop, conflict. Okay, so if there's in, not any in this collection that came back from this query, okay, then what I'm going to do is go ahead and allow, just go ahead and uh, make the client win. So all this, all of the uh, changes on the client side will go ahead and just be pushed right into the server. Um, okay, so details, entity conflict, that's what we're working with, and you'll see this resolve conflicts, and there's a couple flags you've got. You can either have the client wins, or you can have the server wins, okay? So I'm going to make the client wins in this case, and that will go ahead and merge the things how I need. Okay, so now I just say save equals to true. Okay, so now it'll go next, okay, and we'll go through all of the uh, conflicting entities, okay? For, like I mentioned on this screen, there's only going to be one. Okay, so as long as there's uh, no change in the discontinued flag, we will go ahead and accept all of the changes on the client. So the client will always overwrite the server as long as they're not uh, discontinued. Um, okay, so if I'm going to save that, then we, what do we do? We try to save it again. So we do the data workspace, application data, save changes again, okay, and make sure that the handled is equal to true. Okay. Okay, so basically if this, uh, what will happen, we're going to test a couple different scenarios. One, I'm going to make a change to the discontinued flag and one I won't. And if I don't, um, then I want to go ahead and um, go ahead and um, allow the changes. If there is a change on the discontinued, then what I'm going to do is just go ahead and present the um, the conflict resolution screen like we saw before. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit F5 and run this and see what we got. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just modify uh, this first product we have here. Um, I'm going to open two screens to simulate two users. And the first one, I will go ahead and let's just make a change and not mess, not mess around with the discontinued flag. And I'll just, you know, put a two wings in there and we'll press save. Okay, and on this other one, I'll just, you know, I'll change it to shoes. Okay, so what happens is the second one, you'll notice it didn't come up with a conflict screen because the discontinued flag didn't change around. And if we go back to our search and refresh, you'll see that the last one won. Okay, so the client won. Okay, so now what, what's the case where we have a discontinued? All right, so let's go ahead and open up the Red Bull twice again simulate two users with this this record now and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set its discontinued flag okay and save now over here what I'm gonna do is put this back to wings okay and I'm gonna try and save this and now you'll notice that there's our data conflict and that's because the discontinued flag has changed okay so we can go ahead and now let the user determine what um, should be the correct value in that case okay so that's how you can um, that's how you can control how um, conflict data conflicts are handled inside of your screens and keep in mind that in general typically line of business applications are going to um, use the default behavior which means out of the box the runtime will take care of um, managing data conflicts and handling concurrency issues so thanks for watching